This podcast is an attempt to address five myths about fat. Fats really are a is a generic term referring to different types of fats or several classes of fats which include fatty acids, triacylglycerols or triglycerides, phospholipids, glycolipids, cholesterol, lipid soluble vitamins and a few others. So the term fat refers to all these different molecules rather than to one specific molecules. In the general usage of people, the term fat sometimes is used synonymously with cholesterol, which is completely inaccurate. In fact, cholesterol is most likely less than 10% of our total dietary intake of fat. Myth number two has to do with the components of dietary fats. The major component of dietary fats, almost 90% of our dietary fat intake, is in the form of triglyceride or triacylglycerol. The remaining 10% includes all the other lipid classes I mentioned earlier. Fatty acids, phospholipids, cholesterol, glycolipids, lipid vitamins, and so on. So in fact, the major dietary intake from uh, into the body is in the form of triacylglycerol or triglyceride. Myth number three is that all dietary fat is bad. That is completely inaccurate. There are many important dietary fat components that the body needs for its normal functions. We need essential fatty acids. Those are the uh, omega-3 and omega-6 precursors of fatty acids that we get from the diet. That those are very important and we cannot synthesize, so we have to get them from the diet. We also need cholesterol, believe it or not. We need cholesterol to synthesize vitamin D. We need cholesterol for maintenance of cellular membranes and synthesis, proper synthesis of cellular membranes. We need cholesterol for uh, the synthesis of steroid hormones, including the androgens and estrogens. We need several lipid vitamins, vitamins A, D, E, and K. All of them are necessary for normal cell function. So, in fact, there are some good fats that we need from the diet, and there are obviously some bad fats that we need to limit in the diet. Myth number four is that dietary cholesterol is a major contributor to elevated plasma cholesterol. That is inaccurate. Our intake of cholesterol in the diet is less than 10% of our total dietary fat intake. In fact, numerous studies have shown that you can go from zero cholesterol in the diet to around 200 or 300 milligrams per day of cholesterol in the diet and plasma cholesterol levels 
do not change, indicating that dietary cholesterol is a minor contributor to plasma cholesterol. There are, in fact, two very important contributors to elevated plasma cholesterol. The first one, by far, is how much our liver synthesizes, how much cholesterol our liver synthesizes on a daily basis. So the liver output of cholesterol is quite important and has a lot to do with plasma, elevated plasma levels of cholesterol. The second important contributor is our intake of triacylglycerol or triglyceride in the diet. Saturated triglycerides in particular can be a contributor to elevated plasma cholesterol. Myth number five, decreasing dietary cholesterol intake will result in a decrease in plasma cholesterol. That is inaccurate as well. In fact, there are two more important changes in dietary lipid components than that can contribute to lowering cholesterol in the plasma. One would be the reduction of saturated triacylglycerol or triglyceride intake in the diet. And two is the increase in monounsaturated fatty acid and polyunsaturated fatty acid uh, in the diet, uh, both of these changes, the decrease in saturated fat, the increase in monounsaturated fatty acid and polyunsaturated fatty acid intake can contribute to reduction in plasma cholesterol much more effectively, as numerous studies have shown, than eliminating cholesterol from the diet.